on. Oh, there we go. There's Antonio Conte there. So as I say, it was a four. It was four nil actually to, to Spurs against Crystal Palace. Two nil defeat at home to Villa. Brentford two all. And these were the three games before the World Cup break. Losing home to Liverpool, win at Bournemouth, and a, a win against Leeds. So a bit of a mixed bit of form going into this game. But they do say form goes out the window in this match. However, Arsenal will be confident, like they've been confident all season. <laughs> that is magic. Yeah. Remote control. Absolutely. I mean, look, you can see the frustration from Mikel Arteta after that game against Newcastle. However, a, a really big win at Brighton. It's got to be a transfer news from the Scottish Premiership from my colleague Tony Joseph. This has just come in and we can tell you that Celtic are willing to listen to offers for defender Stephen Welsh in this when window. He's attracting interest from clubs in Europe and the MLS. Now, it's believed that boss Ange Postacoglu is a fan of him, but understands Welsh's needs and desires for regular football to progress in his career. Now, in the summer window, if you remember, Celtic knocked back a season-long loan bid with an option to buy of 3.5 million from Toulouse. And in January last year, Celtic rejected an approach from Udinese for the Scotland under-21 international. But since then, big changes for Celtic, of course. They've signed Yubi Kashirai from Vissel Kobe in this window. And they also have Moritz Yen on loan for La Homme with an option to buy in the summer. Right, well, we've got some breaking news for you now. And it comes from Aston Villa. And it looks like a, a new left-back could be joining on. Uh, Anton, let's get straight to you. Yeah, Aston Villa may well be signing... A new left back, Alex Moreno is the name. A fee of around twelve and a half million pounds has been agreed with Real Betis. Now, the left back is due to fly to Birmingham tomorrow to have a medical and sort out personal terms. We know he's already been left out of the Real Betis squad going out to Saudi Arabia for the Super Cup. So it looks like Moreno will be an Aston Villa player soon. Time for state of play now and Southampton have agreed a deal with Racing Club for midfielder Carlos Alcaraz. The 20-year-old will cost them around £12 million to become their second signing of the window. Now this one is moving quickly with the player due to arrive in the UK today to complete his medical. Now, Nathan Jones said after their victory in the FA Cup at Palace that he wanted three to four new signings. So this isn't expected to be the last piece of business that they do in this window. If Arsenal have their way, then I think so, yes. Um, Arsenal remain in talks with Shakhtar Donetsk. I've been saying this the whole month. It is all about the money now. The gap in valuation exists between what Arsenal are prepared to pay and what Shakhtar want. Shakhtar, we think we want in excess of £85 million. They haven't budged on that. They feel Mudrich is that good that he should be classed in the price range that Man United played Ajax for Anthony, that Manchester City paid Aston Villa for Jack Grealish. Arsenal, meanwhile, probably thinking, well, hold on, he's a good player, but he's more in the bracket that Liverpool paid PSV Eindhoven for Cody Gakpo. So those are the two starting points for each club. I think Arsenal want to find a compromise where they get closer to Shakhtar's valuation, but not as high as £85 million. Maybe they can come up with a deal where they increase the, the amount that they pay up front, but then get to the valuation with the incentives and the conditions and the appearances and the goals and the honours that he potentially could win. As far as Mudrik is concerned, we've been saying it for the last couple of weeks, it looks like he wants to go to Arsenal. All of the noises he's making on social media would suggest that Arsenal is his preferred destination. I just wonder now, with the João Felix situation, whether Chelsea, now they are close to getting João Felix, whether they might just move away from the Mudrik situation because they were in for him as well and leave a free run for Arsenal. This deal will probably work for both parties as well because Chelsea will probably look to the summer where they can reassess and see what other options are out there for their squad. But for Atletico Madrid as well, they paid, what, close to £120 million for João Felix. Now, if they were to go an option price now or sell him now, they wouldn't get anywhere near that money. It's likely they're not going to get anywhere near that money when they do eventually sell him. But if he does go to Chelsea, performs really well for six months, he goes back to Atletico Madrid with three years left on his contract and maybe his market value being slightly higher than it possibly is just now. And then that means that they can sell him for a higher price come the summer. Carve mentioned that their Arsenal um, wanted to sign him as well. 
Manchester United were looking at him, but not at the terms being quoted by Atletico Madrid. They simply were not on the agenda as far as João Felix was concerned if the price was around 11 million euros for the loan fee alone and then add the wages on, you're looking at, you know, close to 20 million pounds for a six-month loan deal. So as far as Arsenal and United were concerned, it was a no-goer at those prices. And also some news reaching us uh, here today. We heard, didn't we, from Nathan Jones earlier. They, he said they were in the, the market for some deals. Southampton have agreed a deal with Racing for the midfielder, Carlos Alcaraz. He'll cost Saints around £12 million pounds with minimal add-ons and become their second signing of the window. He's due to fly into the UK to complete the medical within the next 24 hours or so. So we'll get more on those stories, no doubt, with the transfer show at 5 o'clock. The attacking midfielder, I suppose we've been talking about attacking midfielders, so I'm potentially playing on the left-hand side, not necessarily always the right, but it's Leandro Trossard from Brighton and Hove Albion. Now, here's the key here, Mike. Brighton have an, uh, an option to extend his contract to the summer of 2024. And what we're looking into is if Brighton have exercised that. And that doesn't necessarily mean he would stay at Brighton. It would mean they'd probably get a higher fee. Now, he didn't play on Saturday due to a calf injury. They won 5-1 at Middlesbrough. Fantastic performance. But the manager, Roberto Di Zerbi, said he wants more from Trossard and he can play better. Well, playing better is a hat-trick at Anfield a few months ago. I mean, he's been a real integral part of this Brighton side. And he's but they're not well. happy since he got back from the World Cup, though, are they? No, then that's what, we're, that's what we've heard from Di Zerbi. Uh, before that match against Middlesbrough. Obviously, things have gone, gone well after a 5-1 win, but Spurs are in the market potentially for an attacking midfielder, and Trossard has been mentioned.